Hey folks, welcome to a how to play video for Super Fantasy Brawl put out by Mythic Games. Now, we wanted to go ahead and put this out there because uh, while there is an online platform available for you to try it out already, maybe you're not familiar with that, so we wanted to provide a video for you to give you an introduction to the game and just the bare basics of how, how the game plays so that you can kind of sit down and get started as soon as it shows up for you. Now, there are some things that I didn't cover in the rule book, and that's simply because it, most of it is set up and it's not really necessary. It's all self-explanatory right there for you, so it's not that hard. But one of the things that I did want to mention is the drafting of your teams. There's two ways to do it. You can do a casual draft where you have basically just a common pool of miniatures and you just take turns choosing champions out of that pool until you both have a team of three and then you're ready to get going. Or you can have a competitive draft where you each bring five different champions to the table. And uh, the first thing that happens is that you're able to choose one of your opponent's champions that they can't draft. They're able to do the same thing for you. And then you can start drafting your uh, champions based upon what strategies, what tactics you may want to employ, taking into account what champions your opponent is bringing to the table. So the competitive draft is, uh, I guess, much more interesting, but you also do have the casual draft available to you, and both of them are pretty neat. But with that having been said, let's go ahead and get down to the table and learn how to play Super Fantasy Brawl. Now, Super Fantasy Brawl is a arena combat game where each player is going to bring their team of champions to the arena and battle for supremacy. Now, the way that you reach supremacy is by getting five points scored by your team first. Now, the most efficient or elegant way that you can score points is by utilizing the challenge cards, which are up here at the top of the board. But you can also score one point for knocking one of your opponent's characters out, uh, making them respawn back at their team gate. Uh, if you follow the setup instructions in the rulebook, this is pretty much what you'll come out to with each team taking their formations on their deployment zones. You'll also have no less than four traps out on the board set up in these six trap hexes. Each player will take their deck and draw a hand of five cards from that. Once they've drawn their five cards, they can choose to discard any number of cards from their hand and then draw back up to five. But that's the only time in the game that you're able to do that is right at the beginning. Once all the setup has been completed, you're gonna take this coin and you're going to flip it. One side denotes this team, the other side denotes the other team. You'll give it a flip and that will determine who goes first. So in this particular situation, uh, Kilgore's team is going to take the first round of action. Each round is split up into two player turns, and each player turn is split up into three phases. The first phase is the scoreboard phase, where you're going to check to see if you can uh, score any of the challenges that are out here already on the board. The second phase is the activation phase, where you're going to be taking the cards that are in your hand and using your magic cores to play up to three of those cards from your hand. And then you'll move on to the upkeep phase where the active player will ready each of their cores, discards their hand, and draws a new hand of five cards. Now the activation phase is where the core of the game takes place because that's where players are going to be moving their champions around the arena, making attacks, setting themselves up to possibly try and score some challenge cards. So that's where we will be spending most of our time today as I show you how to play Super Fantasy Brawl. So as we begin, Goldar is going to uh, have the first move here. He's going to use his yellow core here to play this yellow card called Mihartes. And Mihartes allows me to draw one card and add it to my hand. And then it also gives Goldar's allies the ability to gain plus one attack and plus one movement through the rest of this turn. But it also allows him to move to in and of itself. So we're going to go ahead and move him one, two, like so. Zhu Zhao will take the next turn and use a blue core in order to play this blue card here called Challenge. Now Challenge is going to allow him to move one, attack at a range of two away, and score two damage with that attack. Then after the attack, it'll allow him to pull that target one towards him. 
Uh, well, the only thing we're going to use this for is movement because he's not within range to do anything. So we're just going to use his one plus the one that uh, me Hardy's gave him and he'll be able to move two, one, two, like that. And now he's a little bit in more of a strategic position, so to speak. So now I don't have any red cards in my hand that will help my situation on the board at all. So I'm just going to use my simple basic action over here and use my red cord to simply move two. I could have one of my people move one and then deal one damage to an adjacent enemy, but they won't be in adjacency with anybody. So I'm just going to move the two and we'll have Kilgore move one, two up just like this. And then once that's been done, I'm going to take all of the cards in my hand and discard them and draw a new hand of five cards for my opponent's turn and then it'll be their turn after i ready all of my cores now unfortunately goldar has got himself in a precarious situation because he has unknowingly lined himself up for a couple of pretty devastating attacks from gawain so she's going to open up the attacks with uh chain lightning here and chain lightning is going to uh, have to be attacked in a straight line two to three spaces away so here's Gawain and one two three so it's within two to three spaces away and it is in a straight line which the direct attack is calling for and it's going to score three damage altogether and of course Gawain is going to use her yellow core in order to play this card now she could move two but she doesn't want to because she wants to stay at range for this attack and she doesn't have to move two at all. So Goldar is going to take a level three attack. He has one damage, which means that two of those damage will go through and actually hit Goldar. Now, the after attack effect on this card says that if damage was dealt, deal two damage to another champion within two hexes of the target. So within two hexes of the target, Kilgore is definitely there. So two damage is also dealt to Kilgore as well. And that damage goes straight through his armor. He doesn't get to block any of it. Then after that chain lightning attack is over, Gawain will use the red core of magic for a flame spear. And flame spear will allow her to move one and then make an attack at three to five hexes away for three damage. Uh, so one, two, three, that's three hexes away. So that's good. That's within the window. And it is still a direct line of a shot. So that's another three damage that Goldar has to take. His defense will block one of them, which means that one of these must be turned into a three. And now he has four damage instead of just two. But after the attack, it also says push one. So that means that Goldar is going to be pushed once outside of that destruction area for control. And then finally for Gawain's team, Dugarin is going to play Shield Slam, which allows him to move one like this, but then it also allows him to dash two, one, two, just like that. And then each adjacent enemy suffers push one. He's not adjacent to any enemies, so that doesn't happen. But he was able to move one and then dash two by playing this blue core. And then all five cards will be discarded into my discard pile and five new cards are drawn my cores are readied and now that both players have gone the challenge cards will shift down so these first two will become both of them will become scorable now at the beginning of the next round and a new card is flipped over so now we have control the destruction area have two or more champions in a trap hex or control the manipulation area so as you can see, Dugrin here already controls the manipulation area, but it's not Gawain's team's turn yet. So he won't be able to score that just yet, which means that Kilgore's team will have the opportunity to try to knock him off of that blue area before he scores it. But we do go back to Kilgore's team. And at the beginning of their team, they go through their scoreboard phase which means they check to see if they score any of these things well Kilgore is the only champion in the red destruction area so he does control the red destruction area which means that he will score this card and score two points for his team this card will go over here as completed and that's the end of his scoreboard phase Kilgore is going to go ahead and take the lead here and he's going to start off with a fury attack which means that he can move two and then he's going to have a 
area of effect, which means that all of the places around him could be damaged by his two uh, damage attack there, but he's only going to be adjacent to one person, so it's not really going to have a huge effect, but he is going to be able to heal one after the attack, which is a cool thing. So first things first, he's going to move to right up into Darren's face here, and he's going to do that attack of two damage. Well, Darren doesn't have any defense on her, so she's going to take two damage outright, and then Kilgore is going to be able to heal one, and then Kilgore is going to play his Relentless Advance card, which allows him to move one, which he'll be able to do this, and then he'll be able to force one up to two hexes away, so he'll force her one back, and then Kilgore is able to take the space that she was in. And now we don't have any blue cards in our hand, so we're actually going to utilize the special ability up here of uh, let's see, we've used our red and yellow, then we're going to use our blue to move one and then plan one as well. So we'll use Goldar to move one like that, and then we will plan one card like this. Planning simply is taking one card and putting it on top of your deck so that it will be the first one that you draw during your upkeep phase. And now with all of that having been done, all of cards are discarded. All of your cores are readied, draw five cards, and you're ready for your opponent's turn. The first thing that we do during Gawain's turn is we check to see during the scoreboard phase to see if they've got everything done. Uh, so this one, the control and manipulation area, cannot actually be scored yet, so this doesn't count. Even though Dugrin is controlling the manipulation area, it's not in a space that yields any points yet, so it cannot be scored, so that doesn't happen yet. And we don't have two champions uh, or more in trap hexes, so that also is not scored either. So, as we're going to start off here, we're going to, first of all, uh, Darren is going to get on the action here and use a blue core to go ahead and launch the Spring the Trap. And so she'll be able to move two. She'll move one, two, just like this. And she'll be able to do a Strength 2 attack up to four hexes away, but it's an indirect, so it could be anywhere. Uh, no obstructions, line of sight doesn't have to be had or anything like that, but uh, he's up to four hexes away definitely here. So that will be two against Goldar, and he does have a one defense, so he just takes one damage from that. Uh, if the target is on a trap hex, which he is not, uh, he would get an extra two damage, but after the attack, the target uh, if the target is in a trap hex, then they suffer stun. None of that happens because they aren't in a, in a trap hex, so that's it for that card. Then Dugarin is going to come on in and play uh, Knockdown. He gives him a, a movement of two, which will be one, two, just like this. And then it has to be melee, that's the range here, since the hexes are right next to each other. And it is, so it's another uh, two attack on Goldar. He has a defense of one, so one of those gets through. So we'll take, we'll turn one of those over. So now he has six damage on him. But after the attack, Dulgren's allies gain plus two against that target until, uh, uh, plus two damage until the end of the turn, which is pretty cool because now Darren is going to be using the red core here and playing Heavy Shot. And Heavy Shot allows her to move two. She's not going to, she's just gonna stay put. But up to two to three hexes away, she can score two damage, but it's also going to be plus two here. So that's a four damage attack. And it gains one if Darren is on a trap hex, which she is not, but it will push or push two. Uh, so it'll push one at the very end if he's still alive, which I don't think he will be, but that's a four attack. He only has uh, one defense. So three more goes on, which is nine, which knocks him out poof, back over here to his gate. Now, what that will do for Darren is that first of all, allows her to score one point for her team. And then it also levels her up. So now Darren also has the ability that she gains plus two armor while she's on a trap hex. And she also doesn't trigger traps uh, in the hex that she goes through. So that's a pretty cool thing as well. And now we go into our upkeep phase, 
where all of these are discarded, our cores are readied, and we draw five new cards. Then these are going to slide on over. A new one is revealed, and now it says at least two of your champions are leveled up. Well, uh, Gawain's team is close to that, but not quite yet. Uh, controlling the manipulation area. Well, Dogren is still here, and you can actually score a point for it now too. So we'll see how that works out. So beginning on Kilgore's team's new turn, we check to see if we can uh, accomplish any of these challenges. We can't. Uh, so that's it for the scoreboard phase. We go directly to our activation phase. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is uh, Kilgore is going to do a Maul Thrash. Now that allows him to move one if he wants to, but he doesn't want to. He just wants to stay right where he is. And uh, he's going to level a level two attack against Gawain here, which she doesn't have any armor. So that will uh, make her take two damage outright. And then it says after the attack, we push two. Well, she's backed up against the wall here, pushes are in the direction from from whence the action came so she would have to, she would be pushed twice into this wall which since she can't move would cause two more damage which means one of these ones will be turned over to a three so that was the blue core and now we're going to use the yellow core uh, for focus. Now what this allows Zhu Zhao to do is it allows him to move one and this also gives the, our champions plus one attack and plus one movement until the end of this turn. And now that'll let me play uh, Harpoon Strike which is gonna allow Goldar to get back into the action. So he's over here in the gate since he was knocked out last round and he's got two movement with, with this card but with uh, Zhu Zhao's focus card he's it's a plus one so he's got three movement now one of that movement has to be to place him in one of these deployment areas and then he can use the rest of his movement and the rest of his action card as normal so let's see we're going to go ahead and use his one of his three to put him here and then two three to get right there and then he's going to launch his harpoon strike against Dulgren right here which is a, a direct attack which he is in a straight line there's no um, hindrances or anything like that and it's two to three so one two spaces away he's in the window there so it does one damage now the thing is is that Dugrin has a has a defense of two so the attack won't actually get through his armor but after the attack it's going to pull him two so it's going to pull him one and then he's going to go another one but he can't so he's going to take a damage for that second that he goes over there and so one damage will be put over on Dugrin um because that pull damage goes straight through his armor but more importantly what happened here is that uh goldar was able to pull dulgren out of the manipulation area so he can't score this point over here with this challenge card at the beginning of their turn so that was a uh, didn't score very much damage but it definitely kept him from scoring another point point. And so now we go into the upkeep, upkeep phase where we discard all five of our cards, draw back up to five, and ready all of our cores. All right, so that'll hopefully give you a very basic understanding of how to play Super Fantasy Brawl. It is not a difficult game at all uh, by any stretch of the means. It is a, a fairly straightforward rule book, very uh, intuitive rules. Uh, so this isn't a very difficult thing at all and I hope that you have a real basic understanding of how the game plays at this point. Now there were a couple of things that I wanted to clarify, things that I've heard people say over the course of the demos that I've been given and that type of thing just to provide better clarification. The first thing happens to go to the player board where you have your basic actions listed. Now as you can see with your basic actions you can use each of the red cores to move one and then perform a special action or you can use any of your your cores to simply move two without doing that special action and that's a clarification that I wanted to make because it doesn't mean that you have to use all three of your cores uh, to move two you simply use one of them and instead of doing that little special basic action you'll get to move two instead of just one plus the action another point of clarification is 
that those challenge cards that are going to be giving you points throughout the course of the game, they can only be scored at the beginning of your team's turn during that scoreboard phase. They cannot be scored at any other point throughout the course of your turn, only at the beginning during that scoreboard phase. So you really have to work hard to get your champions into the right positions on the previous turn, hopefully be able to hold those positions, and then at the beginning of your next turn, score those challenge cards. But that's just a very simple point of clarification for scoring those challenge cards. But with that having been said, I think you have a pretty good understanding about how Super Fantasy Brawl plays. If you have any questions, of course, let me know in the comments below. I'll be periodically checking them from time to time. Well, that's about it. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.